you actually remodel it at a spiffy damn pressure tube. Can I get that? Why are you a jerk? Why are you a jerk, Rob? Well, hello, can you hear me? Hi. Hello, guys. hello. Hi. Guys, do you know we're sitting we're sitting here with a living legend? Yes. My, my opinion at least, right? I'm, I'm just happy to be living. Yeah, right? <laughs> Forget the legend stuff. I'm just happy to not be dead yet. So so Which if I was dead I wouldn't know, so who cares, right? So let's let's talk a little Ren and Stimpy right now. Okay. I'm ready to talk some Ren and Stimpy because I miss Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, Big I do. Time. Well you know what? I don't I understand that, but I, I still live with them all the time. Yeah, you don't. You can't get away from them. No, I can't. They're like a bad rash, you know. So, or athlete's foot. <laughs> so, so, how did how did the idea of Ren and Stimpy come about? I mean, the cat and dog pairing is not too unusual, but but just the idea of how they act and how they interact with each other almost seems very unusual, at least for the time it was. Yeah, you know, it it may seem unusual. But it's not really. They're, we sort of like ripped off Bert and Ernie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if you tell anyone, I'll kill you. No. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of other characters in Ren and Stimpy. Uh, anybody uh, like, uh, what were their names? Uh, Gandy Goose's Sourpuss cartoons. Any of you? Gandy Goose is out. Terry Toons cartoons. Terry Toons were like LSD trips. They were the nutty, weird cartoons. Heckle and Jekyll. You ever seen a Heckle and Jekyll cartoon? They're just out of their mind, crazy, weird, just ridiculous cartoons. That influenced us a lot. But, uh, you know, we we did a, a pilot of Brennan Stimpy in uh, Nickelodeon. And at that point, all we, we didn't have. We pitched the show. Sorry. We pitched the show to uh, Nickelodeon. It was part of a, a series concept that John Kay came up with called Your Game, which was a parody of our game comics in the yeah. Rascals. And uh, it was kind of huge and overblown with lots of characters and stuff. And uh, Vanessa Coffey, who uh, was the creator of the Nicktoons concept and producer for Nickelodeon, she said, Well, just do the dog and the cat. We like that. So, at that point, we, there was no concept for the show at all. There was just the dog and the cat. So uh, then we did the pilot, Make House of Blues, and it was just them in jail. And we just did jokes. We just did a bunch of gags about it. Uh, but, you know, really there's never, ever been any kind of... Uh, it's like Seinfeld. You know, it's not about anything. It's just about some characters and, and the, the stupid way they deal with each other. And that's it's great. And as we've seen with Seinfeld, a show about nothing is successful. I mean, that's that's what it. You know why? It's because uh, uh, high concept projects are a, a construct. It's it's a bag to keep a bad idea. You know, it's like I got nothing, but I I saw a movie once where they did this, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna put a different coat of paint on. You know, so that's why you, so many of the things you see. Are repackaged day old bread, you know, uh, and it, it gets real hard. Plus, it's hard too when you're coming up with stuff that nobody's done before. People who buy shows don't know how to deal with it because their frame, their frame of reference is really bad. You know, they know, well, okay, I'll give you the news. Yeah, if, I, if, I'm on, if I'm off on some tangent, I apologize, but it's just it's the way my head works. But, um, I pitched a show I did at Nickelodeon a few years back, and it's, it's incredible, great, wonderful idea that they, they should be making what no one's making it. And I'm partly responsible for that because I, I'll pitch a couple of times and then I get fed up and I go screw it. I know. You know, and I'm, I'm not pushy enough and all that. But I pitched a show I did at Nickelodeon, and they, uh, the woman said, no, this isn't what we're looking for. And I said, well, what are you looking for? She said, well, we're looking for a cartoon. Okay. What we want to do is we want to do a cartoon about cat.
characters, children preferably, but if they're not children, if they're adults, then they should act like children. So children and not be, you know, not be too serious, be fun and silly. And they shouldn't live in a place that's normal. They should live in some place unusual. And I'm like, oh, like under the sea. Yeah, like under the sea. And and you know, and then they should be strange and funny and quirky and uh, I go, like SpongeBob. Yeah, I like SpongeBob. So you, you know, want SpongeBob. Sponge yeah, so and why why on earth would I want to make a cartoon that's a copy of a cartoon I already made? It's <laughs> true. It's true. It's true. And and I'm so it's frustrating when you have original new ideas and pitch them and no one's interested. Besides SpongeBob, it's interesting because that's kind of a question I was leading into. Besides SpongeBob, do you think there's any other cartoons that have kind of tried to copy your format, um, sense yeah. of humor? You know, I'm sure there are. I, there's one called that comes to mind called The Mighty Bee. Anybody seen The Mighty Bee? Isn't it just exactly like Ren and Stimpy? Like, I'm watching it the first time I saw it, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh my God! I didn't realize Bill Ray was there. So of course, Bill Bill Ray took, he took a, a wee all over it. <laughs> Bill Ray stuff. So of course it looks like Ray stuff. But uh, Bill Ray was the art director. So uh, so I think the guy Eric Weiss, I think it was his name. I tried to contact him to get a job because hell, I need work. And I can do that. Yeah, I can copy me. I can do that. So and I never got any response. I was like, I was hitting the wall. And so I, I asked around and somebody I know working on the show was like, wow, he's afraid they'll piss, piss John off if he hires you. It's like, wait a minute, I can't get work because it might piss off John? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all, Not especially if you know John. And and, and so kind of kind of going into that, and I... We see a lot of Ren and Stimpy still. I mean, we, they, they, they're promoting Ren and Stimpy a lot through products. If you go into Toys R Us right now, there's Ren and Stimpy stuff sitting on the shelves. Um, I sign it all day. Pl little plushy animal, a little plushies, um, little mystery boxes. Pops, pops. Pops, yes. And, and you Lan would, lanyards. Lanyards, yes. And you would think that with them putting out all this merchandise, and obviously it's selling, people are buying it, that they would think, oh, well, why don't we bring this back? Why don't we try this again? Last year at San Diego Comic Con, okay, go back to 2015, the first day you could apply for a table, try to get a table at the con, I applied. And I tried all the way up to the con, and I couldn't get a table. And then they announced prior to the con that, hey, Come to San Diego Comic Con 2016 and help us celebrate happy, happy, joy, joy, celebrating 25 years of Nicktoons. Every single Nicktoon was represented at the con except Randy Stimpy. Oh, no. And yet, they built this amazing construct, which was the highlight of the huge Nickelodeon megastructure thing. Yeah. And at the top of it was the coolest, like, uh, 3D, big plastic, uh, Bob's big boy looking red and stiffy in space suits, which I will, I will steal them. <laughs> I need them. They're the coolest things I ever saw. But anyway, red and stiffy was the 600 pound gorilla that was not in the room. They weren't there. I couldn't get a table. Do you think there's a reason why that they, they weren't represented there, but everything okay. else was? First of all, I want to say, Anything I see, you know how averages work? So you got like the far number over here and the far number over here, and you cancel them out right away. I'm one of those far numbers. My opinion is it doesn't matter because A, I'm insane, and B, I've got a lot of bitter like BS in me about the show. But I still love I'm it. I'm very opinionated awesome. about, about it, and I don't have any filters. So, uh, which you think would be good, but it's, it's not. So, uh, what were you talking about? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> off one of those tangents again there, Bob. I do. I'm sorry, I apologize. No, no, no. I'm, I was just saying, why do you think... Oh, why they're not doing this? Oh, no, why so, don't... So, has anybody, anybody seen the adult party cartoons? We're going to stick with adult party cartoons. That was, that was Spike TV at the time, right? Yeah. Spike and, TV. And 
not only did I was I not invited to that party, I had no idea they were being made. It was kept from me. And I see how they turned out. It might have been a good thing it was kept from Well, <laughs> at first I was really angry. Because I'm kind of angry about stuff anyway. And, uh, which is bad. But, uh, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. I jumped in and put the fire out and saved the studio and saved your show. Okay. And you decide you want to do more and you give it to the guy who burned the first studio down. So he can do it again. And he did. Uh, and so at first I was angry and later I felt joyous and vindicated. <laughs> nobody remember, I mean, we remember it, but nobody really celebrates that era of Ren and Stimpy. They, they like the Nickelodeon era. Well, See, people, because they thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to make Ren and Stimpy into a homoerotica? You know, wouldn't it be great to show, like, you know, nude women getting their boobs ripped off by piranha? Whatever kind of crazy shit they got going on in there, it's like... It really felt like, if I'm saying, I don't know if you guys understand the reference, I don't think a lot of you will. It's LSD, almost like, it's almost falling like, off a building. They took Ren and Stimpy and Howard Stern. Like 90s yeah. Howard Stern and mashed it together. Yeah. That's yeah. really what it felt like. And I, ironically, without Billy West. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wouldn't do it. That's probably, well, I mean, it's a good thing, but seeing now, looking at the product now, it's a good thing he didn't do it. But, so, anyway, the reason I kind of went to that is that uh, that whole thing was a giant fiasco again. And so, Rin and Stimpy already had lots of scar tissue first relationship with Nickelodeon. And, uh, and honestly, anybody who worked on the show, we all need psychotherapy like that. We're all screwed up in the head because uh, our Jim Jones, mm -hmm. wow, there I go. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, run the tape back. Sorry, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, you know, the guy that we really looked up to and admired I was, I was his, I was his leg breaker. I was his right hand man. I was, I was his mouth, you know. And and uh, he was basically let us all down by because of his ego. And so uh, it was really, it was really tough. We're all, we all like doing it. Uh, and those cartoons, those adult party cartoons, have poisoned the well. Uh, you can't, you can't cleanse the influence of that from the whole thing because it's the last thing you saw. And at a, at a cursory glance, it's indistinguishable from the other innocents, except there's horrible, weird stuff. And Ralph Bakshi, like, what? Why is Ralph Bakshi? I don't understand that. So how, how is, and I mean, I, you would probably understand this a lot more better than I would, how is Spike TV allowed, how are they allowed to do the cartoons? Did Nickelodeon still own them at the time? No, Nickelodeon is, Nickelodeon is a toe on a big monster called Viacom. Okay. Nickelodeon doesn't own the property. Nickelodeon is owned by Viacom. Viacom, Viacom owns everything. Uh, so, uh, it's not, it is, nothing is about Nickelodeon. Uh, so no one's going to do Ren and Stimpy. It's clear to me. Uh, Vanessa Coffey went to Paramount with, with my blessing and pitched them the idea of me doing the feature and directing it. And they said, no, we're not doing Ren and Stimpy. But yet, they'll still make product of it. They're, they're selling the hell out of their merchandise. The toys, there's tons of toys. There's their clothing, there's PJs. There's, it looks like SpongeBob. There's tons of stuff. And there wasn't that stuff back in the day. No, there wasn't. That, that was a weird thing. Is when when Ren and Stimpy was on the air, you could hardly find any Ren and Stimpy merchandise. Yeah, because uh, it was run by uh, uh, what's your name? Anyway, the lady that ran the studio uh, wasn't into merchandise. She was kind of a hippie lady, uh, and so she she wasn't really into. It. She thought it was kind of mistaken. Yeah, they, they had uh, they had trading cards. Yeah, they had trading cards, yeah. and they had plushies in the farm, and they had uh, talking plushies on the street. Yeah. 
um, is there, do you, do you happen to own any of the merchandise that they put out now? Or are you a big fan? Only the ones I can buy or steal. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't own anything. I own the clothes I'm wearing. Okay. And I, and I, I think I have earned the right to draw right in a stick with nobody messing with me. Oh, no, yeah. definitely. And you still, you still draw it. I don't know if anybody stopped by Bob's table yet, but seriously, it's like watching the cartoon when you look at the table. I mean, it, it, yeah. nothing has changed. No, it's the, it's, it's the stuff. It's the real stuff. I don't want to take up all the time, but I want to see if you guys have any questions as well. Does anybody yeah, have a question out there? Just feel free to raise your hand. Don't or throw things. That's okay. We can we move quick. There's no shoes. No throwing shoes. Bob won't yell at you too much. No. Just enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like 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 the horse with the nipples and 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 the the, the rubber nipple sales. Yeah. There's some stuff that's risque for kids. They jump. Yeah, okay. Okay. Did y'all ever go too far? You mean the whole Jeffrey Dahmer thing at the end? Some of the stuff was... Oh, pshaw! <laughs> it's a little kitty cartoon about murder. Call the police. You know, okay, we did Ren and Stimpy for us, first of all. We didn't make it for kids. We never, we never did. If, if Nickelodeon was willing to let us do it, we were willing to let us do it. We, you know... Uh, because I don't, you know when they talk about stuff being edgy, you know, tightrope tight rope walking is edgy. There's danger involved, okay? So if you want to you be the guy on the edge, you got to be willing to fight the fight. you got to be willing to, to challenge the norm, you know, and to, and to battle it out with broadcast standards and practices, which I like to call double standards and practices. But, uh, so you, you, you have to push, and sometimes you get away with incredible shit. And we did, we got away with a whole lot. And you know, some people, who won't, I won't mention, like to, like to complain about, oh, Nickelodeon was terrible, they cut out my jokes. It's like, you know what? Everybody cuts out jokes. Everybody cuts out jokes. There are people in, in place in every network, in every, every TV station, whose job it is to cut stuff out. The FCC goes in there. I mean, yeah, you always hear that on like, on like bonus features and contents on DVDs and stuff. They it's always right. talk about how, oh, there was this great thing in it, but they cut it out. Yeah, they cut it out. But you know what? You got to be ready for that. What we used to do is we put red herring jokes in, okay? Because I figured, look, they're going to cut stuff out. There's a woman whose job it is to be a drag and to cut people's humor out and to, and to basically throw constant flaming wrenches in your creative process. They have to justify their existence. So why not put stuff out there for her to take out? Stuff we can live without, like something that you can't, no one you would ever imagine would allow in a cartoon. So she could, in her infinite wisdom, notice it and take it out. Uh, and then you to still have the stuff that you really want in there. Because yeah, we had, I tell this story all the time because I've never heard a greater story. Uh, anybody know who Wilbur Cobb is? Wilbur Cobb. Uh, he's, a, he's a character in, in Stimpy's cartoon show at the end where they go see the great Wilbur Cobb to show the cartoon. Stimpy, the cartoon he made me. Hey, talk talks like this, Wilbur Cobb. Rah, 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 rah. His ear falls off. You know, yeah. That was Jack Carter, the comedian Jack Carter. So, uh, he's, he's uh, uh, where does Stimpy go to? Museum of Science and History to find out why the dinosaurs became extinct. So they meet this guy, it's Wilbur Cobb, and they meet him, and they think he's a tour guide, but he's a lowly bone polisher. <laughs> so uh, they meet him, and he's telling them why the dinosaurs died. Goes, oh, I'll tell you why the dinosaurs went extinct. They, they, they ran with scissors. No, no, I'll tell you what they did. They, they went swimming. They, they ate a half hour after they went swimming. No, no, wait, no. I'll tell you what killed the dinosaurs, it was chockage, really bad chockage. Well, the network went haywire, you know. You can't say jockage. You know, yeah, sure you can. Jockage, you know, why can't yeah. you say jockage? There's Cruix ads on your own network. Why can't you say it? They wouldn't, they wouldn't let us do it. So I thought, okay, I gotta come up with something else. So I, I thought about it. I said, I'll call you back, I thought about it. I called him back, I said, hey, I had an idea. We run this fight. 
can we say hemorrhoids? And they said, sure. I about lost my mind. <laughs> I honestly thought, oh my God. So I called up Jack Carter. Jack, it's Bob. Get over here. I think this is going to be the big point in your career. You better hurry up. So Jack comes over. And the performance he gave was phenomenal. Was, oh, I'll tell you what killed the dinosaurs. It was hemorrhoids. Really bad hemorrhoids. And it got on the air. <laughs> it got on the air. It's amazing how one thing is chosen over the other when you think one's yeah. worse. Yeah, and you know, in the same cartoon, they're talking about dinosaur ridden stimpies. And one of the notes I got for her was, please remove the marijuana trees from the background. I'm like, those are ferns. <laughs> they're, not, they're not marijuana trees. Marijuana trees? So they're looking for things that aren't even there. They're just looking to keep their jobs, to, uh, to do the thinking. So I'm going to ask some questions here. You want to ask some, some trivia questions? Yeah, let's, let's okay. check how much time we got here. Yeah, we got Got plenty of time. Yeah. Is that a Tribble on your phone? It is actually. It, no, it's a microphone. I've been, been kind of vlogging all day long. Yeah, that's cool. That's nice. So yeah, you got off your shoes with that. Yeah, you really can. All right. Well, you know, so I'm going to do a quick drawing. I'm going to ask a few uh, trivia questions. Uh, okay. Uh, first hand up. If you yell out, uh, you know, maybe that'll work better. Uh, what's uh, Ren's cousin's name? Sven. Sven. Awesome. Oh, you get a drawing. Spence fat. He just so happens to look like Stimpy. He's from the old country. I'm not sure what country it is, but we know it's old. Dressed as a mouse. Okay, okay, forget that. It was it was a boy who cried rat. Real quick, uh, another one. Uh, in what cartoon do Ren and Stimpy adopt Kowalski from prison? And they eat meat. Come on, come on, fake dad. Okay, you guys are awesome. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm gonna think of another one. Okay. Uh, in uh, Mad Dog Hoek, the wrestling one, what is Stippy's name? Starts with a K, come on. What? Killer what? You're so wrong, but you win anyway. Killer <laughs> 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 
Bad dog bullet and killer Kadugan. Yesterday you were telling me how you used to work on G.I. Joe and Savage Sword of Conan and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was just like, uh, what's been your favorite property to work on other than Ren and Stimpy in your career? Like, and some of the things that you've done. Uh, my favorite property to work on other than Ren and Stimpy is one that will make me some money for a change. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know what? I'm not, I really don't care about the property. Uh, I, you know, I, I tell people, say, what do you do? I say, I'm a turn polisher. And I'm like one of the best ones in the business, you know. Like I want to give out awards, you know, the Emmys. I want to make awards called turdies. And the trophy is a golden turd, you know, and a gleaming, beautiful golden turd. And you give it to people in the entertainment business who take bad ideas and make them look good. Because it's hard damn work. And it's an uphill fight all the way because the stupid people with the bad ideas don't want you to fix their shit. Yeah. Because then it isn't their shit anymore, you know, so, um, yeah, I want to do turdy awards, and I don't know if that answered your question, but it's been a long day. Do, do I win a drawing for having that question? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite cartoon that's out right now? You know what, Here, here's the funny thing, I, say, I don't watch cartoons ever, but Rick and Morty is awesome, yeah. and, and it's, it's bright. 
I actually turned down a job to be the art director on that show. Oh. Go ahead. You <laughs> join me in this thing. I tried. I tried to see if I could do a long distance, but I would have had to move to LA. Oh, so that's essentially why you turned down some moving. Yeah. Well, plus my girlfriend Michelle's mom is in New Jersey, and she's old and she's kind of frail. We have to help take care of her. And so, you know, so the mom isn't around anymore. We're sort of stuck in New Jersey. And that's okay. I'm good with that. Yeah. And honestly, right now, I, I as much as I like Rick and Morty, I, all I see is millions of ideas, millions of drawings, and every one of them looks like a mini feature. And from a production standpoint, I look at that and I go, oh my God, what a nightmare that must be to produce. Like, I look at stuff like Tom Terrific, really simple cartoons that looks like two people made in an afternoon. I like that. It's like, Nobody died trying to make this cartoon. You know? uh, it, it's such just such a too much work. These days, work work bad, rest good. You know, I, I don't I don't need to fight those fights anymore. And I and I and I'm just making excuses because I I'm pissed that I didn't do it. You never know. You might maybe later. I'm not. Right. But you know what? It's you know, things happen. When they need to happen. And honestly, I I'm kind of tired of making other people rich. You need to make you know, rich. rich. But you know what? I am rich. Look where I am. Look who's out here. Is that what more could I want? That's exactly you know what? Money is rich. Money, money does not make people happy because the only people who are happy because of money are the people with money. And the only reason they're happy is because they're keeping you people from having money. And they're in charge now. You know, so uh, you know, let them have their money, but they can't steal my integrity and they can't take away my heart. And they can't take away Ren and Stimpy. That's, that's no, yeah, they took that away. No, that, 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 is, that, is your, that is yours. I will fight that. It isn't, you know what, though? It isn't just mine. And honest to God, as, as much as I owe John K a, a pop and a snoot, you know, I wouldn't be doing this here if it weren't for him. And he's brilliant. It's a shame he doesn't like care what people think about him. Are you he still think enough about himself to, to act like a like a decent human being? Are you still in touch with people like Billy West? Oh, when I when Billy's busy, I run into him at cons and I run into him sometimes. But I love Billy to death. I gotta tell you a quick story. So right before my 40th birthday, I fell and shattered my right femur. Bam! Like my whole leg twisted around and got about that much shorter. I was really in bad shape. They rushed me to the hospital, emergency surgery, and they rebuilt my leg. So for my 40th birthday, I was really messed up, sick, in the hospital with a trip, a morphine trip, having convulsions from pain. Couldn't go to the bathroom. I was in terrible shape. So my 40th birthday was the worst day of my life. 